Welcome to World News. The content of the briefing includes. Xi to Vietnam for rail, Yun to Netherlands for chips, BOJ Tankan. Philippines and China trade accusations over South China Sea collision. Hong Kong holds first council elections under new rules that shut out pro-democracy candidates. The man who remade Serbia. AP photos, Moscow hosts a fashion forum with designers from Brazil, China, India and South Africa. Xi to Vietnam for rail, Yun to Netherlands for chips, BOJ Tankan. Nikkei Asia. South Korean President Yoon Suk-yeol is set to visit the Netherlands and attend a state banquet. During his visit, he will meet with chip equipment maker ASML to discuss sustainable energy, agriculture, and high-tech industry. Meanwhile, Chinese President Xi Jinping is making a rare trip to Vietnam to discuss a rail project, rare earths, and Beijing's common destiny security architecture. The Bank of Japan's latest Tankan quarterly sentiment survey is expected to show a gradual recovery in the Japanese economy. Additionally, the ASEAN Japan Summit will take place in Tokyo, where leaders will discuss their response to global issues and deepen cooperation on supply chains and digitalization. Philippines and China trade accusations over South China Sea collision. Nikkei Asia. The Philippines and China have accused each other of causing damage to their vessels during a collision in disputed waters in the South China Sea. The Philippine Coast Guard accused China of firing water cannons and ramming resupply vessels and a Coast Guard ship, while China's Coast Guard claimed that the Philippine vessel intentionally rammed its ship. China claims almost the entire South China Sea, which is a key route for global trade. The Permanent Court of Arbitration ruled in 2016 that China's claims had no legal basis. Hong Kong holds first council elections under new rules that shut out pro-democracy candidates. Bloomberg. Voters in Hong Kong went to the polls on Sunday for the first district council elections since the electoral system was overhauled to exclude pro-democracy candidates. Turnout is expected to be significantly lower than in the last elections due to the elimination of most directly elected seats. The elections are seen as a test of public sentiment towards the patriots-only system imposed by Beijing following the 2019 protests. Beijing has increasingly eroded Hong Kong's Western-style liberties, most notably with the imposition of a national security law that has led to the arrest of pro-democracy activists. The Man Who Remade Serbia BBC Serbia's President Aleksandr Vucic has been accused of undermining democratic norms and eroding democratic institutions. Critics claim that he has consolidated power in his own hands and is on the way to becoming a dictator. Despite this, Vucic has dominated Serbian politics for the past decade, first as prime minister and later as president, and is now more than a year into the second and final five-year presidential term he is allowed to serve. The Serbian Progressive Party, SNS, he led for more than 10 years until this year looks set to be returned to power in next month's elections. However, a united opposition aims to make gains and target the mayoralty of the capital Belgrade. A victory in Belgrade by the opposition could irrevocably dent Vucic's authority. Vucic has cultivated good relations with rival geopolitical powers and although he says he wants Serbia to join the EU, he has championed friendly relations with Russia and opened Serbia up to Chinese investment. AP Photos, Moscow hosts a fashion forum with designers from Brazil, China, India and South Africa. Yahoo! The BRICS Plus Fashion Summit 2023 took place in Moscow earlier this month, bringing together designers from Brazil, China, India, South Africa, and other countries. The summit was sponsored by the Moscow city government and featured runway shows by designers from 12 countries. The event highlights Russia's shift away from the West amid the tensions over the conflict in Ukraine and its focus on expanding ties with BRICS members. The summit was attended by fashion industry professionals from around 60 countries and included business meetings and open discussions. Update 1 Hong Kong activists arrested in city's birdcage election. Yahoo! Three pro-democracy activists were arrested in Hong Kong on Sunday, just before voting began in a Patriots-only district election. The arrests came amid a national security clampdown and efforts by the pro-China government to increase turnout at the polls. The activists were members of the League of Social Democrats, which had planned to protest the election process. The election has marginalized opposition figures and has seen a record low turnout, with only 11.6% of the electorate voting by 12.30 p.m. The government has introduced regulations that have effectively barred all Democrats from running in the election. UFC Fight Night 233 video, Khalil Rountree wobbles Anthony Smith, wins by TKO, calls for Alex Pereira title fight. Yahoo! 
Khalil Roundtree got the signature when he's been wanting to add to his resume Saturday after defeating former light heavyweight title challenger Anthony Smith in the UFC Fight Night 233 co-main event. Roundtree, 13-5 MMA, 9-5 UFC, saw his career best streak reach 5 when he beat Smith, 37-19 MMA, 12-9 UFC, by third-round TKO at the UFC Apex in Las Vegas. The warhorse once again made the difference with his power and striking technique as he managed to hurt Smith multiple times before dropping him for the finish 56 seconds into round three. Afterward, Roundtree called for a title shot against reigning 205-pound kingpin Alex Pereira. I came in with high hopes I would have a good performance, Roundtree said in his post-fight interview with Paul Felder. Las Vegas is the home of the UFC. And in my mind I feel like it's time to have a champion at home. I'm in the top 10 now and the only thing that I want to do is fight Alex Pereira. I know that I have other people that I have to possibly fight, but I know that's a fight the fans would want to see. I think that from what I've seen, the fans would love to see that fight. With the result, Roundtree, who entered the fight number 12 in the latest USA Today Sports MMA Junkie light heavyweight rankings, can expect forward movement into the top 10 of the weight class. The 33-year-old hasn't tasted defeat since January 2021, but had never got open the hump of four straight wins previously in his career. Now that has changed. Cows in Rotterdam Harbor, seedlings on rafts in India, are floating farms the future? Associated Press. Floating farms are being explored as a solution for food security and climate change challenges. The floating farm in Rotterdam, which started operating in 2019, is a three-tiered farm that houses cows and produces milk, cheese, and buttermilk. The farm uses a conveyor belt to drop hay for the cows and collects rainwater for them to drink. The cows are milked by a machine and their manure is turned into organic fertilizer. The farm also plans to expand into vertical agriculture, growing vegetables indoors under lights with water purified using heat from the cow's manure. In India and Bangladesh, a non-governmental organization is creating floating rafts to protect crops from monsoon flood waters. The rafts are made of bamboo and are built larger and heavier to withstand storms. Plastic covering and shade nets protect the crops and solar-powered pumps collect rainwater for irrigation. The organization hopes to scale up the number of floating farms to make them commercially viable. Experts note that floating farms face challenges in terms of scalability and cost-effectiveness but could be a viable option for certain regions and urban areas. Agriculture gets its day at COP28, but experts see big barriers to cutting emissions. Associated Press more than 100 world leaders have agreed to make their food and farming systems central to their plans to combat climate change. The announcement was made at the United Nations Climate Summit, COP28. The UN Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, has issued a report that offers ways to reduce livestock emissions, which account for over half of all emissions. The report suggests that the meat industry can improve productivity and efficiency without necessarily cutting down on meat consumption. However, the meat industry has been accused of protecting its interests during COP28, with one report claiming that the industry had presented its practices as sustainable nutrition. Farmers and producers have also been accused of resisting attempts to reduce meat consumption, such as opposing meatless Mondays and challenging research into the health risks of eating red meat. Research from Stanford University has also found that animal farming receives significantly more financial support and lobbying attention than meat alternatives. Argentina, Ukraine Zelensky attending Miley I inauguration. Deutsche Welle. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is set to attend the inauguration of Argentina's newly elected president, Javier Miley I. Miley I, a right-wing populist and self-proclaimed anarcho-capitalist, won Argentina's presidential runoff election last month. Zelensky congratulated Miley I on his victory and the two leaders spoke over the phone. Miley I has expressed support for Ukraine and has offered to host a summit between Ukraine and Latin America. Zelensky's attendance at the inauguration signals his support for Miley I and his pro-US foreign policy stance. Russia's ambassador to Argentina is also expected to attend the inauguration. Other world leaders, including Spain's King Felipe VI and Brazil's former President Jair Bolsonaro, are also scheduled to attend. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your favorite observer from the Six Degrees World, Dr. Six. Today, we have quite a diverse range of news to discuss. From presidents visiting foreign countries to accusations over a collision in the South China Sea, and even floating farms and fashion summits, there's something for everyone. Let's start with the diplomatic visits. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol is heading to the Netherlands to discuss sustainable energy, agriculture, and high-tech industry with chip equipment maker ASML. Meanwhile, 
Chinese President Xi Jinping is making a rare trip to Vietnam to discuss a rail project and rare earths, as well as Beijing's common destiny security architecture. These visits highlight the importance of international cooperation and the significance of these countries' relationships. Speaking of the South China Sea, the Philippines and China are trading accusations over a collision in disputed waters. Accusations of water cannons, ramming, and intentional collisions have been thrown around. The South China Sea remains a hotbed of tension and a key route for global trade. It seems like this issue won't be resolved anytime soon. Moving on to Hong Kong, the city held its first council elections under new rules that excluded pro-democracy candidates. The elections are seen as a test of public sentiment towards Beijing's imposed electoral system. It's unfortunate to see the erosion of democratic liberties in Hong Kong, but it's important to keep an eye on how the situation develops. Now, let's talk about Serbia and its president, Aleksandr Vucic. Critics accuse him of undermining democratic norms and consolidating power in his own hands. Despite the controversy surrounding him, Vucic has dominated Serbian politics for the past decade. However, a united opposition aims to challenge his authority in the upcoming elections. It will be interesting to see how this political landscape unfolds. In a lighter note, Moscow recently hosted the BRICS Plus Fashion Summit, bringing together designers from Brazil, China, India, South Africa, and other countries. This event showcases Russia's shift away from the West and its focus on expanding ties with BRICS members. It's always fascinating to see how fashion can bridge cultural gaps and create connections. In recent news, three pro-democracy activists were arrested in Hong Kong just before voting began in a district election. The election has marginalized opposition figures, leading to a record low turnout. It's disheartening to witness the clampdown on dissenting voices, but it's crucial to keep the conversation going and support those fighting for democracy. Moving to the sports arena, Khalil Rountree had a spectacular win in the UFC Fight Night 233 co-main event, defeating Anthony Smith by TKO. Rountree now calls for a title fight against Alex Pereira, aiming to become a champion in his hometown of Las Vegas. It's always thrilling to see athletes reach their goals and strive for greatness. Now, let's dive into the fascinating world of floating farms. Rotterdam has a three-tiered farm that houses cows and uses innovative methods to produce milk, cheese, and buttermilk. Additionally, in India and Bangladesh, floating rafts are being used to protect crops from monsoon flood waters. These floating farms offer potential solutions to food security and climate change challenges. While they face scalability and cost-effectiveness issues, they could be a viable option for certain regions and urban areas. Shifting gears, agriculture took center stage at COP28, with more than 100 world leaders committing to make food and farming systems central to their climate change plans. The UN Food and Agriculture Organization has issued a report suggesting ways to reduce livestock emissions without necessarily cutting meat consumption. However, the meat industry has been accused of protecting its interests and resisting attempts to reduce meat consumption. It's essential for all sectors to come together and find sustainable solutions to combat climate change. Lastly, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky will attend the inauguration of Argentina's newly elected president, Javier Milei. Milei's right-wing populist and anarcho-capitalist stance has garnered attention, and Zelensky's presence signals his support for Milei and his pro-US foreign policy stance. It will be interesting to see how these leaders interact and what this means for their respective countries. That's all for today's news roundup, folks. Now it's your turn to join the discussion. What are your thoughts on these topics? Do you have any questions for Dr. Six? Let's keep the conversation going and explore the fascinating world of current events together. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the Six Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of Six Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the Six Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize Six Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, sixdobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive Six Do Brief via email.